Hello, and welcome back to Video Games and Such. Um, this episode, we're going to take a look at two of my little toys that I've got, uh, one of which I've had for several years, the other which I've uh, just picked up this week. And uh, what you're looking at now is the menu for the Retro USB AVS, which is uh, it's a new version of the NES console. It features 720p HDMI video, which is really cool for... Uh, playing sharp and clear NES games. Uh, it has NTSC and PAL output. It has a, an NES cartridge slot or a, and also a, a Famicom slot for Japanese games. So you can play uh, PAL, NTSC, both US and Japan, which is really cool. And it also has four controller ports, so you can have four player. Um, it has a cheat code database and a Famicom expansion port so you can use the disk system and other accessories and it also has an online scoreboard. So let's have a quick look through the menus and then let's play th play a few games. Um, let's look at uh, input options first. So these are some uh, combinations to take you back to the menu, um, turn cheats on and off, which are basically Game Genie codes. Expansion Emu, I believe this is for a, a Japanese accessories. So, for example, if you're using the four-player uh, capabilities, which you can toggle on and off down here, if you want to play a Japanese game in four players, you have to have that on. That's my understanding of that one. Uh, you can have Turbo on and off for A and B, and you can also set the frequency. And Auto Play, I believe that is for setting it to start the game as soon as you turn on the console as opposed to going to this menu. And then you've got video options, which lets you stretch out or make it uh, s completely square pixels or stretch it out. I want it somewhere in between. So I'll go with, that'll do for now. You can change your vertical border. Um, sometimes you can just avoid showing glitchy stuff at the top or bottom of the screen. Um, you can turn on scan lines and you can change how, uh, how thick they are or what have you. So that's for simulating the old CRT look on an old cathode ray tube, CRT TV. Um, games would look a bit different because the games were designed for those types of TVs because they're pretty much the only TVs that people used back then. So for example, with having different shades of colors next to each other, they kind of blend together a bit better than they would on a modern TV. So you can play with that. I'd rather play with it off, but I might experiment with it later on. Uh, left, hand side, uh, left hand side or left side hide and show, a similar sort of thing with the vertical border. You can, uh, certain games will have glitchy stuff or that sort of thing showing on the left hand side and you can show or hide it. Extra sprites, um, that is, basically expands the ability for the NES to show, or the AVS rather, to show sprites. So traditionally the NES could display eight sprites and then things would get start to get flickery uh, if you, there's more than that on screen, whereas this can kind of eliminate that flicker or minimize it. Um, it doesn't work on all the games. And from what I gather, some games, if you leave it on, the games will either won't work or have, will have issues. So I'm going to leave that off for now. Um, and this is the expansion volume, so certain games will have uh, extra sound abilities such as Famicom Disk System games and uh, some cartridges, Famicom cartridges, and I'm not sure about NES, maybe not NES, that have built-in sound chips uh, that allow for extra types of audio. And also got a scoreboard, I haven't really played with that yet, but... It's basically for uploading high scores to the internet, not really something I'm interested in. Uh, and get cheat codes, if you have genuine cartridges and you plug them in, um, it'll automatically bring up some codes for that game, which is really handy. So instead of manually having to enter them in like you would have to if you had a Game Genie, uh, you can just enter them, uh, just choose them from the list. And that's pretty much it for the menu. Uh, well, let's go and play some games. So this is the other one. Um, what you're seeing now is my uh, EverDrive N8, which is a flash cart for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, I've had this for several years now. I think I got it in about uh, maybe 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. Um, 
This one I've had for my PAL NES, so I've been able to play PAL games perfectly fine, PAL ROMs. Um, in case you don't know, a flash cart, in this case, you, the EverDrive N8 lets you put and plug an SD card into the cartridge. Uh, you put ROMs on the SD card, and that it basically lets you play them as if you're playing the actual cartridge, more or less. I mean, some games might have issues depending on what it is, but... Uh, I'm going to try out some games. I've got a se selection here. Uh, let's start out with some Japanese games. Let's start out with this one, Holy Diver. Um, got some different types of games. So this one I haven't played a whole heap of, but I'm really keen to uh, play through it sometime. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ronnie James Dio, he had a band called Dio and had an album called Holy Diver with a title track called Holy Diver. Great album, great song. Um, and I like to think that you actually play as Dio, Ronnie James Dio in this game. I have no idea if that's the case, but um, hopefully. Certainly looks like him as much as a 8-bit sprite can. So yeah, one, one thing about having an, a PAL NES and using this EverDrive is I could certainly play PAL games with no problem but if I tried to play a US or a Japanese game it would just run too slowly and in some cases it wouldn't run properly so definitely one of the perks for myself as a PAL game player or from the PAL re region uh, being able to play NTSC game, NES games and Famicom games with no issues at least much fewer issues than I did on my PAL NES. As you can see, this runs pretty well with glitches and all um, because I don't have the extra sprites option on. That's why you, you'll see a bit of flicker. And you'll also see on some games slow down. That, as far as I know, there's no way to avoid that. But that works for me. It's all part of the authentic experience. So probably play this until I die, which is pretty soon, I think. But we'll see. Let's see how we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The skull wrapped in a cross. Definitely not going to see that in a <laughs> um, in a non-Japanese game, in a US or European game. So if I hit my reset button on the AVS, it takes me back to this menu, which is quite handy. Uh, so let's look at uh, some Famicom Disk System games. Now, one of the really cool things about the EverDrive N8 is you can actually run Famicom Disk System ROMs without having a, a disk system, which is fantastic. Uh, Famicom Disk Systems, uh, while it would be really cool to own one, and maybe one day I will, uh, the games, the, the well, the disk drives can become faulty over time from what I understand and also games can be overwritten so if you go out and buy a game you might not necessarily get the game you want because it's been overwritten with a different one so that's a bit of a gamble there uh, so let's try Zelda 2 first of all this will show off some of the expansion audio as you can see it actually brings up the menus Zelda 2, I'd like to play through the Japanese version of this because it's in a number of different ways it's quite different. First thing you're going to notice is that the music is different because the disc system had the ability for extra audio. And I really like this song uh, better than the original. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, I'll just play this save game that was already there. And as you can see, normally if you had a disk system, you'd have to turn over your disk, well, take it out, turn it over, and put it back in to side B. But in this case, it does it all for you with genuine loading times. So I won't play heaps of this, just a little bit. Get to see a little bit of the differences. I think the water doesn't move in the um, other version. So you'll notice a couple of things about this. The sound at the start is different. 
when you get into these battle sequences. And also the music is different as well. And a few of the sounds here and there are different. I think you might notice when you get hit, it's different. And yeah, there are a whole, a whole bunch of other differences um, that I won't go into because I can't remember them all. And I, again, I haven't really played through this. Um, let's get some P. One of the differences in this, you can choose which you want to go up. Um, whereas in the uh, NES version, you don't really have as much of a choice. And yeah, another thing you notice is when the um, the enemies and things come on screen, they're just different coloured blobs. There they are. So that'll do for Zelda 2 for now. And as far as uh, Famicom Disk System games go, uh, there's a couple in particular that I would normally uh, gravitate towards. One of them is this one, which is the original Super Mario Brothers 2 uh, in Japan, released in 1986. Uh, this one you may also know as uh, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. Now. It's really hard, never beaten it, I haven't even come close to beating it, but uh, I've always wanted to give it a try. Uh, I have played it before on a virtual console, but it's cool to have it on the original hardware. I was trying to do a, a trick there to get one-ups, but never mind. So it's really cool to be able to play this on not exactly the original hardware, obviously the AVS is not an original Famicom with a disk system attached, but, you know, it, it functions in pretty much the same way, uh, which is really cool. And uh, a few things about this game that are different, um, when you jump off enemies, different to the original Super Mario Brothers, I mean, when you jump off enemies, if you hold down the jump button, you bounce a bit higher. Um, what else? Uh, there are new uh, red prana plants where they kind of can pop up even when you're very close to them, um, unlike the green ones which will kind of stay inside the pipe. There's the poison mushroom which you would have seen earlier, the kind of mushroom with the dark, I, guess, I don't know if it's quite black but it's close to it, uh, which uh, hurts you or kill you. If you touch them, uh, the mushrooms look a little bit different. They've got eyes now, which uh, and they became refined. The clouds have smiley faces on them. Um, and yeah, in general, it's just a really hard game. So it's very cool to have this uh, on the real, well, again, not exactly the real hardware, but you, you get the gist. Um, very difficult game. And one day, maybe I'll beat it. Yeah, there's a few other graphical changes here and there in this as well. And the other game that I would tend to go for is this one. Now, these, these games, on my PAL NES, they just ran really slow. And Lost Levels or Super Mario Bros. 2, the, there was a bit, bit of a glitch with the, uh, the score and time. I uh, wouldn't display properly. So this is the other Super Mario Brothers 2, but this is the original version of that. Uh, so this is Yumikojo Doki Doki Panic. I probably butchered that. You'll notice some expansion audio here. Uh, a number of differences here to the uh, the, the game that was released in the rest of the world, Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, the enemies are mostly the same. Sometimes they have fewer animation frames. The grass doesn't animate. Sounds are different. Using the disc system sound again. 
lots of things don't animate. Uh, the beanstalk, I'm pretty sure the beanstalks animate in the uh, US version. There's a lamp. Uh, the mushroom becomes a heart. And uh, I believe even in the Super Mario Bros. 2 manual, it mentions a heart, which uh, was changed. Cherries don't animate either, neither does the power block. Uh, the, the waterfalls animate, but very quickly. It's probably bad for people with epilepsy, I'd imagine. And another thing is you can't run. The B button picks things up, but you cannot run in this. So... And the life, instead of one-up, it shows your face. Uh, bombs, if when they blow up, they say bomb, B-O-M, I believe, without the B. Uh, more phonetic. This is the Cooper shell, which is a strange kind of face. Uh, the star is still a star, though, so you can certainly see the Mario influence on this game. I believe that, if I'm not mistaken, Miyamoto actually did work on this game. And of course, this was first appearance of a bunch of Mario enemies, such as the Ninji there, the Shy Guy, uh, Birdo, Pokey, bob -ums. So, even though it wasn't originally a Mario game, it kind of got turned into one, and, and it, a bunch of the characters from it got absorbed into the Mario universe. So, it's interesting how that kind of worked out. So... I think I'll just play the rest of this level and then move on to the next game. Uh, also, the clouds don't animate in this, as they did in the other version, which you may be more familiar with, depending on where you're from. Here we are, up to Birdo. Very strange not being able to run. Don't know if I'll ever get used to it. Some different sounds there. Missed that one. I always thought it was funny how the eggs look like the clouds. That should do it. And there's the, the bird or eagle or whatever it was. Became, be, well, was originally a weird tribal mask thingy. And here's a bonus chance screen. Very bare bones. Very basic. Some different sounds. Or at least the sounds when you hit your items. Anyway, you get the gist. Oh, actually. Of course, I'll go through. I'll finish this off. The other thing is. Uh, once you go to the next level, you can... Uh, oh, maybe it's between worlds. So you can't change character here, which I believe in between levels you, you can in uh, Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, maybe in between worlds you can. Uh, but this also has a save feature because it's a, a disc, so you can write your saves to the disc. So that's quite handy as well. Um, and let's move on to the next game. I love that song. Okay, so as you can see, it saves the uh, the progress there. So, oh, I don't know if it actually saved my game, but it saved something. Um, let's try another Japanese game. This one, which is the Japanese version of Castlevania 3. Uh, the reason I wanted to try this is because this actually has expansion audio as well built into the cartridge. Uh, I did try this game one time and it crashed on me, so I don't know if I just had a bit of bad luck or what, but curious to see if it'll crash this time around. Okay, I can't read that, so let's just move on. The sound is really cool. All right, so first thing, that's an interesting cross. Um, 
I believe that was changed to just a regular old cross in the, uh, the other version of the US version or the rest of the world version of this. And those other things that kind of stick out of the cross diagonally. Um, if you're familiar with the logo for the uh, Church of Scientology, uh, that's actually a, very similar to that. So that could be one reason why they changed it. They didn't want to get in trouble with the Scientologists. I know the Scientologists, uh, they like to uh, use the legal system. They like to sue people, so... <laughs> They probably had no idea when the Japanese creators of this game created it, but uh, there you go. Uh, from what I understand, that much like with a number of games, there are quite a few regional differences between this and uh, the other versions of this game. But that music is just really cool. And again, there is an option in the menu to change the volume of the expansion audio. I haven't really changed that. It sounds pretty good to me, but again, I, I don't have a, a Famicom or a disc system, so I, I don't know exactly what volume these games expansion audio was originally, so I'll just leave it on the default for now. Uh, it just sounds so cool. Haven't really played a whole lot of Castlevania games. I'm certainly keen to get into them more. They're somewhat notorious for being difficult. Um, certainly there are harder games out there. I've played a little bit of Ninja Gaiden and that's very hard. Um, but the controls on this can be fairly, I don't know, rigid. And uh, if you get hit by an enemy, you can easily get pushed off, off the screen or into some water or to certain doom, so fairly difficult, but uh, but from what I've played, pretty fun as well. Uh, the second one, I'm not that interested in Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, quite notorious by now. So I think I've hit a dead end here. Uh, Medusa heads, good old Medusa heads. Close to death. I might just play until I die. Oh dear. And there I go. Okay. That'll do. So I believe that's all the Japanese games that I've got here. So let's play some US games. So yes, yeah, so again, having a PAL NES, it's, I'm finally able to play any uh, NES games from the US. Uh, as intended, at the right speed. So first, let's try a game that wasn't released in uh, PAL territories, from what I gather, Mega Man 6. Again, these are games, Mega Man games, I haven't really played a whole lot of. They're fairly hard as well. Um, or very hard, depending on your skill level. I'd probably say they're very hard. Depending on the game, I'm sure some are harder than others. I think Mega Man 2 is meant to be the easiest. Play a little bit of this. Let's try... Flame Man. Why not? Well, oh, look at all these statistics. Master of Flame. Alright. So I don't know what that purple stuff's meant to be. Maybe that's oil. I did mention something about an oil field. I believe if I hold down the button I can charge up my power. Yes. Uh, okay. Do I need to charge up to destroy that? Am I stuck? That's the question. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Alright, well that's probably a good time to stop this game. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, what else? Uh, let's also check this out. Um, oh, let's check this one out first. So another cool thing about having a flashcard is you can play some prototypes and ROM hacks and this sort of thing. So you can play games that were never released. So there was a game in Japan called Mother uh, on, the, on the Famicom. Uh, never came out anywhere else in the world. Uh, the sequel, Mother 2 in Japan, was called Earthbound in the US on the Super Nintendo. Um, so that one actually did come out outside of Japan. And then there was one on Game Boy Advance called Mother 3 as well, which also was a Japan exclusive. So this is the Earthbound that came out in Japan as Mother, but this is an English translation. Um, I, from what I understand, it was completed but never released. So I'll just play a teeny weeny little bit because this is an RPG, so it's, you know, a long game. Here we go. So this is Mother or Earthbound. People, I think, call this Earthbound Zero. So let's fight a lamp. Anyway, I've shown a tiny bit of gameplay. <laughs> That'll do for this one. And finally, for the US games, let's check out the uh, beta version of Super Mario Brothers 2. Hopefully this will work. I haven't tested this one yet. I only just got my hands on it. So this is somewhere in between uh, Yumikojo Doki Doki Panic and the final Super Mario Brothers 2. So as you can see, the colors are different. Might be some other minor differences. I think the, yeah, I think the story is slightly different in the way that the words are spaced out or grammatically or something. Anyway. This screen looks about the same. I have 19 extra lives to start off with, which is pretty handy. I'll be a princess. I believe the colors are a bit different. Um, I think, might be wrong. I probably chose the wrong character because I think um, the whites in Mario and Luigi's eyes are not present in this one, I think. So again, the uh, grass does not animate. It is, it is red as opposed to black. So they've changed the color, but it's not animating. Beanstalk's not animating. Uh, lamp still there. Or maybe the lamp never changed. I, I can't even remember what it was in the final version. Cherries don't animate. Power block doesn't animate. Waterfall still animates quickly. I think I can't run. No, I, st I still can't run. One up is a mushroom. And it says one up. Cooper shell's there. Star's still there. As you can hear, this music's different. So this is kind of like the music uh, from the underground passages in Super Mario Bros. 3. It's like a beta version of that. Pretty interesting. I don't know why they changed their mind on this one. Because they could have, could have used it. I mean, they could have maybe refined it a little bit. And it kind of speeds up, or the beat speeds up. It's pretty cool. So bomb has the B. For those of you playing at home, this is a shortcut to get to Birdo. In case you're not aware, I didn't dare try doing it uh, before because I was uh, playing as 
wrong character and you can't run, so I don't think I would have been able to jump across that that uh, chasm. Okay, so that'll do for this one. So pretty cool to be able to play those games on my EverDrive. And now we'll have to go back into the menus of the AVS, so I'll actually have to power off the console and power it back on. So let's... There we go. You notice the vertical border would have changed because PAL has a different uh, number of uh, lines to NTSC. And I noticed that in PAL mode, these menus are, are slower. Uh, slower even than they were on my original PAL NES. So I don't know why that is, but it didn't really affect the games from what I noticed. So we'll just play through a few PAL games here and just briefly. So here's Probotector. Reason I wanted to try this is, is just because, just to show something about regional differences. Certain games were just changed for no apparent reason or perhaps for a reason that was maybe silly. So Contra became Probotector. And uh, you play as a robot instead of a, a whatever he is, Marine Soldier, Mercenary, I don't know. Um, so look, I'm a robot now. Um, these are games I haven't played a whole lot of and I'm not very good at them. They're quite hard. So, uh, I don't know what R does. But they are cool games. I think I'd probably prefer to play this with two players. Just so you got another person sharing the the burden of enemies and such, but uh, still, it's a cool game. S, I believe, is Spreader. Definitely want that one. Yes. I didn't mean to jump down, but that's all right. What is F? I don't know what F is. Ah. Uh. I don't want that. Oh well. Too late. So I'll probably just play this one until I die, which will probably be pretty soon. There you go. Right on schedule. So if you're familiar with the original Contra, you probably notice that that's a bit slower. So that's something generally you'll get in PAL games. So I'll also show a little bit of this game, Euphoria, whoops. One thing about the menus of the EverDrive is B advances and A goes back, which is kind of backwards to typically. So this game, Euphoria, haven't really played this, I've barely played it, but a friend of mine, it's his favorite NES game, so it must be good. It's really weird how certain games only got released in certain regions. Who knows why. So those glitches on the right hand side, I really don't know whether that was present in the original game. <laughs> Love that. Love that smiley face. Um, yeah, no idea if those glitches are present in the original or not. It could be an emulation issue with the EverDrive. I really don't know. So that enemy actually reminds me of an enemy from Kirby's Adventure, which actually came out a couple of years after this, so I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what. I got a thing. What is that? Crystal. Ah. What's the subscreen? Select. Hey, how's that for a password? <laughs> like a game of Othello or something with multiple colors. Well, that's cool. All right. Okay, that'll do it for Euphoria. And finally, we'll go, go for one more game, um, another PAL game. This one is a, a classic from Australia. Uh, for those of you outside of Australia, you've probably never seen this before. Um, you've probably never even seen the sport that this is based on, uh, called Australian Rules Football. Uh, there's a national league called the AFL, Australian Football League. 
Um, it was developed in Australia, from what I understand. This is a classic. I have like three or four copies of this on cartridge, but it's in on the other side of the country as uh, all of my NES games, which is why I have my flashcard with me. So let's just go for a single match. I won't play the whole match. We'll just play a little bit. So some of these are actual football teams. Some of them aren't. For example, there's no Hobart or Darwin team. Um, there's no team called Perth. Um, and it shows its age as well because Footscray are now called the Western Bulldogs and Fitzroy don't exist anymore. They moved to Brisbane, kind of. Um, anyway, and there's no Canberra team either. But anyway, let's uh, let's play as Canberra. And you can choose your colour. So <laughs> obviously not accurate for the original sport, but that's fine. And I'll play against uh, Adelaide. And they can be... Funny how it lets you choose the same colour for your opponent. I won't do that. They can be white. Elvis lives. And Sid loves Nancy. Yeah, this really brings up some memories. It's, it's a very amusing game. Oops. So, Adelaide have the ball. Let's see if I can get it off them. No. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. On the full. Out of bounds on the full, no less. So some greater wordplay there. Voc vocalization, not wordplay. The playing of words through my television. Ah, not an out accurate kicker. On the full. Once again, out of bounds on the full. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, I missed it. And he got it behind. So one of the things this sport is notorious for is rewarding you for inaccuracy. So there's there's four posts. So if you get it in between the middle two posts, you get six points or a goal. And if you get it in between the other ones, you get one point or a behind. <laughs> I don't know. There's something uniquely Australian about that, I think. And there's the umpire showing his signals for behind. I want to get a goal. In fact, I want to get the ball on my side of the field. And they got a goal. All right. Then the ball comes back to the middle of the ground again. All right. No. Adelaide have the ball again. Ah, oh, come on. Give me a break. Oh. Uh, I love the crowd. The crowd goes wild. Okay, come on. No. Just can't do it. But anyway, I think you get the idea for this game. So the thing at the bottom, I believe, is a meter for your accuracy of your, of your kick. So there you go. Um... But if you haven't seen Australian Rules Football, I would recommend watching it. Um, just for the novelty value of it all. You'll probably find it quite bewildering and perhaps entertaining. I don't know. But personally, I quite enjoy it more than rugby. But that's a matter of opinion and it tends to depend on where you were born. And what's popular. Okay, well, I'm losing by 21 points, so I'm going to put myself out of my misery. much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you're anything like me you've um looked at a whole bunch of avs videos um on youtube but i thought why not give my own take and test out a few games and have a bit of a play because i'm excited about my new toy i also have a uh an analog super nt in the mail hopefully that will arrive in the next couple of days so you may see a video about that in the future um, I'm excited about that as well. It's basically the equivalent of this, but it's a Super Nintendo uh, with HDMI as well. Um, and it has even more customization features, like ridiculous amounts. So it'd be interesting to play with them. 
and also play some NTSC games, which I can't do with my uh, Super EverDrive car- flash cartridge on my PAL Super Nintendo. So thanks very much for watching. This has been Video Games and Such. Have a wonderful day.